Oh, here we are on the final part of this coastal journey. And I just wanted to look at this idea of sand dune succession and salt marsh succession. So behind us here, we can see a sand dune system. In my previous video, we were down by the beach, which is just over here, and we've got here a sand dune system. Now, as I mentioned in some previous videos, you need three key things when you have a sand dune forming. You need wind, you need sediment, sand, and you need an obstacle. So what you have over here is you have maybe an obstacle which could be seaweed, it could be driftwood, anything like that. And what happens is the, the sand will be blown by the wind onto that bit of driftwood. Over time that will get bigger and bigger and this is known as your embryo dune, your first point of your sand dune system, which we will see further in the distance over here. Over time, you'll start getting different species of plants, vegetation growing. Now, these vegetation will have to grow and survive in very harsh environments because you're inundated by sand and also salt water. So when you have these, these plants, you'll have special species such as marum grass, which we can see behind us here. Marum grass, interestingly, will grow incredibly fast a meter a year so that when the wind blows onto it it can grow through also the roots go really far into the sand and they will then develop um, and hold the sand together over time what happens is your, your your grass your vegetation which grows there will die as it dies it starts to decay into the soil and it starts to create your first signs of soil which is known as a humus or hummus over time, as you go further back through your sand dune system, you will then have different plant species growing where you've got this different type of hummus, a uh, different type of soil. And as you go further and further back into the sand dune system, you'll have even more vegetation as you go towards your climatic climax, which is the end of the sand dune system, which is where you'll have trees growing. Now, what's really important is this idea of human interaction along the coast. Humans, as we can see behind us here, which is a salt marsh, eat exactly the same very similar way in creating this sand dune system, a salt marsh very similar, what you have is humans will start to use this area. Behind us over here you have cattle being used in farming on these in these areas. So once when this would have been covered in timber, covered in trees, you will then have agriculture being used in an area such as this. What that means is this sand dune system or salt marsh system is being affected and that then leads to something called a plagioclimax where you've got human interaction affecting areas such as this. Other coastlines will have different types of human activity. You have tourism, like we've seen on this beach, people going to visit this beach for tourist reasons. And then you also have industry. Industry is obviously key, where you have flat land, you've got areas for salt water to be able to use that in your industrial process, and you can use that material, that water, in your industrialization of coastal areas. Obviously, the land around the coast is incredibly flat, incredibly cheap at times, so industry tends to grow there. So we've got this idea of a sand dune system and here a salt marsh system. Salt marshes, very similar, are formed in very low sheltered environments. That could be behind a spit or in this instance, an area which is tidal. What happens as it's tidal, the tide um, will bring in sediment and as it goes out, when it loses energy, it will deposit sediments, which is why in the further distance you have mudflats. Mud flats similar to here will then start having different species growing. Now, obviously, as it's tidal, it will have salt water coming in and out, and you'll get certain types of species growing, similar to the uh, the marum grass. Exactly the same thing happens as you get more decaying sediment, and as that over time accumulates and creates a different succession of species, creating here this salt marsh system that we can see. Absolutely amazing journey we've had from the Holderness coastline to North Norfolk here to show the changes in destructive waves to constructive waves and how different coastal systems will be affected by different types of erosion, different types of weathering and different mass movement processes. Once again, some great geography in action.